In this video, I want to take a look at something that's very topical at the moment, sexual harassment in the Irish workplace, and what are the remedies, how it's defined, how you handle it, and what courses of action are open to you if you are the unfortunate victim of sexual harassment. So let's take a look. Firstly, sexual harassment is defined in Section 8 of the Equality Act, 2004. To sum it up and to get it down to its essence, references to sexual harassment are any form of verbal, non-verbal or physical conduct of a sexual nature, which either has the purpose or effect of violating a person's dignity and creating an intimidating, hostile, degrading, humiliating or offensive environment for the person. You will note from that definition that it's a case where the purpose or effect is of violating the person's dignity. Therefore, the intention of the perpetrator is completely irrelevant. So if the effect or if the purpose is to uh, violate a person's dignity and it's unwanted uh, conduct of a sexual nature, well then it will constitute sexual harassment. It can be carried out by an employer, by a fellow employee, by a customer or client in the workplace, or even a business contact of the employer. So this particular sexual harassment is sexual harassment that you might encounter in the workplace and it's protected by, by the employment equality legislation under the discrimination grounds and the specific um, offence then of harassment or sexual harassment. So that's why I'm referring here to the whole question of the employer, fellow employees, business contacts of the employer and so on. The employer is liable, that is vicarious liability is a feature of this offence because section 15 of the Employment Equality Act 1998 provides that the employer is vicariously liable for the actions of his employees, whether he was aware or not of those actions. Essentially, an employer has an obligation to know what's going on in the workplace and he will be held liable for the conduct of staff, of employees, of business contacts, uh, because there is vicarious liability uh, set down in the legislation in the Employment Equality Act of 1998. The burden of proof then is something which starts out with the complainant. However, it shifts. It shifts from the complainant, from the employee to the employer. So essentially, where in any proceedings facts are established uh, on behalf of the complainant, from which it may be presumed that there has been discrimination in relation to him or her, it is for the respondent to prove the contrary. That means that if you are an employee and you are complaining about discrimination, you have been a victim of discrimination, what you need to do is establish facts from which a reasonable inference can be drawn that you have been discriminated against. You need to put forward facts from which a prima facie case can be established. Once you do that, the burden of proof shifts from you to the employer. The employer must then prove that discrimination or sexual harassment did not take place. Redress then if you're a victim. Firstly, you can bring a claim to the Workplace Relations Commission who can award up to two years salary, two years remuneration. You can also go directly for sexual harassment claims to the circuit court and they can award up to the maximum of the circuit court jurisdiction, which on the 8th day of April 2018 is 75,000. Also, it's possible that an employee who has been the victim of sexual harassment may suffer psychological or psychiatric injury as a result of that. If that's the case, then it's open to the employee to also bring a personal injury claim, and that claim can be brought within two years of the um, injury. So the time limit's six months in a claim to the WRC. However, if you can show reasonable cause, then that six months can be extended to 12 months. Uh, that is from the last act of harassment.
if the person injury claim, then it's two years from the date of injury or discovery of the injury, and that claim goes through the civil courts. And if it's a breach of contract claim, that would be a six year statute of limitations. So the personal injury claim and the breach of contract claim will go through the appropriate courts, either the circuit probably or the high court. Uh, they are my contact details. I hope you find this video useful. If you do, you might give it a thumbs up down below and you may be interested in subscribing to my YouTube channel. If sexual harassment is something that has occurred to you or you think you may be the victim or indeed you may be an employer with a concern about how to respond to an allegation of sexual harassment in the workplace, my contact details uh, are there on the screen.